is Lifeline. Hello, Gates Child Life Spartans, and thank you for joining us for our Gates Child Life Secondary Level Reopening Forum. My name is Ken Hamill, and I'm the principal of Gates Child Life High School. I'm joined today by Gates Child Life Middle School principal, Dr. Lisa Buckshaw. Also with us this afternoon is Associate Superintendent for Instruction, Mrs. Carol Stem, Director of People Personnel Services, Mr. Jason Dijon, and Director of Physical Education, Health and Athletics, and the district's COVID-19 coordinator, Dr. Patrick Irving, who will be joining us in just a few minutes. The format for this afternoon will be as follows. We will take you through a typical day at our Gates Child Life Schools, outlining protocols that apply to both of our schools. These include things like arrival procedures, walking in the hallways, and classroom time. We'll then each have a moment to share items specific to our buildings. Once we go through all that information, we will answer any remaining questions live. You can submit questions via the chat function to the right of this live video. Please also be mindful of asking questions that have already been asked. We will do our best to answer as many questions as possible within the hour. Let's start by talking about arrival. Families will need to complete the online health screening for each school-aged child in their household each school day. This includes Wednesdays. The district has been piloting the screening questionnaire with staff this week, and so far, it's working well. We will be communicating more details about a test screening email for families very soon. Students taking the bus to school were mailed their bus schedule. Please have your child arrive at the bus stop a few minutes prior to the pickup time. Students need to wear a mask while being transported. If they arrive to the bus without one, they will be provided a disposable one to wear. They will also be required to wear a mask throughout the day. Each building has designated doors for arrivals for buses and parents who are dropping off their child or children. Gates Child Life staff will be stationed in the bus loops and near parent drop-off zones in each building to assist students as they enter the building. And again, each building will share specific building information during this presentation. Students will be let off the buses as they arrive in the bus loop, helping to stagger the arrival and maintain a more steady flow out to both Wegman and Buffalo Road. Students will enter the designated doors, wearing their masks, and students who wish to get breakfast will have access to this upon their arrival. It will be a grab-and-go style breakfast, and Gates Satellite staff will be in the hallways to assist students as they learn where their classrooms are located. Let's talk about changing classes and walking in the hallways. Due to the nature of classes and certification of teachers at the secondary level, students will change classrooms for each class. Masks will be worn. Please keep in mind that the hallways will have fewer students in them due to the hybrid and remote options that families have chosen. Our students will not be issued a locker as they start the school year. We will reconsider this once the school year is underway. So let's take a look inside at our schedule and inside our classrooms. The secondary schedule is organized into eight 40 minute periods with a 30 or 35 minute lunch. These days are labeled as A day or B day, and they rotate throughout the school year. Wednesdays are included in the rotation of days. Classrooms are set up to allow for ample space for each child to comply with COVID restrictions, and masks must be worn during class. Mask breaks will occur throughout the day for students and may look different depending on the school or teacher. Each classroom is outfitted with hand sanitizer for students, Students will also have access to wipes that can be used to wipe off desks and materials as needed. Students will need to bring their laptop and charger to and from school every day because learning tasks will be supported by the technology available. They should be logging into Schoology every day and complete the health screening questionnaire before entering school. Each teacher will post a course syllabus in Schoology that can be accessed by students and parents. There are a few different learning models for our students. In the hybrid model, students will attend school in person on either Monday, Thursday, or Tuesday, Friday. 
On the alternate days, they will engage in at-home learning. English language learners and students who have an individualized education plan will attend school in person four days a week. Everyone will learn remotely on Wednesdays. Teachers will provide each of their groups one 30-minute session of synchronous office hours on their at-home learning days. Group one would have an opportunity on Tuesday or Friday, and group two would have an opportunity on Monday or Thursday. In the remote learning model, students are expected to follow their schedule whenever possible. Asynchronous instruction, such as recording and posting of the in-person class lesson, will be provided daily so students can access these at the time that best meets their needs. Schoology will be used as the learning management system with lessons and activities posted and communicated daily, and they will be available for students and parents to view classwork and assignments. For both remote and hybrid learners, each te teacher will host a 60-minute block of time for office hours on Wednesday. The office hours will be posted and communicated in Schoology. Let's talk about related services. Students who receive related services such as occupational therapy, physical therapy, and speech will receive it in similar ways as they have received it in the past with providers pushing into classrooms or pulling students out of class, as well as remote support through telemedical services. Next, we'll share lunch procedures. At the middle and high school, students will eat lunch in the cafeteria or designated areas. There will be some variations at our two buildings as the cafeteria space differs. Between each of the lunch periods, the cafeteria will be cleaned and disinfected. Once in the cafeteria, students will have access to a grab-and-go style lunch that they can eat while sitting, socially distanced, in the cafeteria. Students who are in line to get lunch will need to be masked. There have been some updates made to our code of conduct to accommodate needs during this pandemic. Lockers will not be used to students as we start the school year. This will be revisited if and when the COVID regulations change and or the weather starts to take a drastic change. Students will be permitted to carry their materials in backpacks throughout the school day. They will contain their laptop and other materials they will need for their classes. Students who bring phones to school need to make sure that they're off and away. Any research or student response activities should utilize the student's laptop that is controlled and regulated under school guidelines. Water fountains will be turned off, and we will be leaving the bottle filling stations open for use. Therefore, our hybrid students will be issued a water bottle that can be filled at these stations. Masks must be worn throughout the school day. Every student will receive a reusable mask. Students are permitted to bring their own cloth mask as long as they meet the CDC guidelines. Gators, bandanas, flannel masks, and masks with vents are no longer acceptable masks. There have been several questions about band, chorus, and physical education. These classes will look different this year. The New York State Education Department guidance document states that we need 12 feet of social distancing when engaging in these activities. Physical education classes will take place outside whenever possible, so we will be going outside later in the fall season than we have in the past. When it is not possible to be outside, the gymnasium spaces will be utilized. Band and chorus will take place outside when we are able. Students will also spend time sharpening other skills in these classes, such as sight reading. Student attendance will be recorded every day, including Wednesdays. Students who are expected to be in school on a particular day will be marked present or absent. Students working remotely will have their attendance tracked in Schoology. Students should follow their schedule at home and log into the Schoology courses as they have on the designated letter day. Lastly, our dismissal procedures. The ones I'm gonna share with you are for middle school only. At the end of the day, students will be dismissed from school by announcement rather than bell. 
We've added five extra minutes to the last period of the day to allow for a staggered departure from the building to the buses or to the drop-off pickup area. We will talk about more specific details regarding this in a moment. Now let's move on to some building specific items. I'd like to touch on a few items specific to the high school. We already mentioned that backpacks will be allowed uh, to make sure that students can carry their uh, laptop and charger, which will be extremely important as they will need Schoology throughout the day. Attendance will be taken in school uh, just like it normally is. And again, at home, it will be very important that all students not only check in every day to their health screening, but into their Schoology as well. Our arrival, dismissal, and parking uh, will look very similar to last year. Arrival, the buses will be allowing students uh, to get off in a more staggered fashion, which will hopefully uh, create a more uh, a better flow in the morning so that we're not backing traffic up to Wegman Road and Buffalo Road. Dismissal at the end of the day uh, will also be a little bit staggered with some of our Remoco buses coming back. Um, and then our student parking lot will be cleared. And then parking, we are offering parking spots. Uh, you apply through security. And because of the nature of our uh, hybrid learners being there on the different days, we will have more opportunities for kids to apply for those parking spots, but with the understanding that they will be shared and that if and hopefully when we return to uh, all, you know, at school uh, learning, those parking passes would be prioritized by for the seniors. Uh, no students will be here after hours. Uh, we are waiting on decisions made about athletics, but we will be, for uh, sanitary and hygiene reasons, we will be clearing the buildings. All students have busing, and if you are picking your student up, you should be here right at the dismissal time. Learning expectations. This year is going to look very different than last spring. Uh, the, the accountability is higher, and certainly uh, our teachers are, are well-equipped to provide your kids with a much different learning, uh, learning experience. So again, at home learners, we would expect that you would be uh, logging into Schoology and, and following your classes for those who uh, will be taking part in synchronous learning. And for our kids here at school, uh, we will expect that you would you know, be to class on time, ready to learn and ready to go here at school. The workload and rigor. Uh, we will be moving forward with our learning. So again, we have uh, our learning goals set for each lesson. Uh, they will be clearly stated and outlined in our Schoology lessons with the resources, materials, and links uh, that will be necessary to get our students to those points. But again, very different from last year. It will look like a, a regular year as far as workload, and students will be expected to... Uh, you know, not only prepare, but complete certain assignments at home with homework and different projects. Resources for our at-home learners. This was something that uh, many of you have already talked to me about. We are putting some protocols in place where teachers will be able to provide, uh, you know, hard copies of materials, different books, things like that. Uh, and we will have uh, pickup times. And for those who truly struggle, we are working on potential delivery options. Um, so that your kids will obviously have the materials that they need to be successful in those classes. Athletics, clubs, and activities. Right now, we are waiting. Uh, the superintendents are talking, uh, not only with the Section 5, Monroe County, but also with New York State officials to determine what is appropriate, what is safe, and if, and, and, you know, if athletics do take place, what will those look like, and how will they, uh, how will they run? Our clubs and activities are a little bit on hold right now. Again, if and when hopefully we return to uh, full learning, uh, you know, those things may be reinstated uh, depending on the time of year and their connection to the uh, curriculum that, that we're currently uh, going through. So again, right now, many of those are on hold. Our hallways, our hallways are lined very much like a roadway. So we've got a center line. We're asking that students will be driving on the right if our high school students don't have their permit or their license, uh, this will be 
a good lead up to their driver education experience. But again, here we do drive on the right to promote flow and to avoid uh, groups gathering and, and, you know, just we, we can't have that in the hallways. We need to keep going and get kids into their classrooms where they're distanced with their masks on. And in the hallways, those masks will be required. Office hours. This is something that I cannot stress enough. Not only will our, our, our teachers have office hours uh, during the week, but those Wednesdays, we will be providing you with a schedule of exactly when each department will have office hours. And, and parents and students, I cannot encourage you enough to utilize this time. For those kids who have some questions or just need some clarification, obviously the emails are, are, you know, are always there. But this is your chance to not only ask a question, but to receive uh, you know, a live answer from teachers uh, that could be crucial uh, in, in making sure that you understand the concept and you can move forward with your learning. So again, please take that schedule, post it somewhere uh, that's very accessible, and then uh, make sure you take advantage of those times. Schoology will be our hub. Uh, all student, you know, the expectations, materials, resources, links, uh, those will all be available on Schoology, uh, and then it may send you to other places, but again, that is our hub. That's where teachers will be posting their, their uh, you know, learning objectives for the day, their syllabus, and the different things that your kids will need to be successful. Both these students actually start tomorrow. Uh, you have been contacted by transportation. Uh, I know that there was a few students that were still getting contacted today. But uh, BOCES runs on a separate schedule, and if you're a student who uh, is here in a hybrid situation and you have BOCES on those same days, then uh, you, will, you won't miss a beat. Uh, there, your lunch may be a bit shorter, but we have made sure that you can get what you need at BOCES and you will be able to fill, fill, or fulfill all of your requirements here along with grabbing something to eat. Our construction continues uh, in the back uh, with our auditorium. It's looking beautiful, it's really coming along. I encourage you to safely look from 490 and you'll be able to see it. Uh, but again, it's, it's turning out to, to be a really beautiful, uh, beautiful addition to our school. That has limited parking in our east lot. So again, students who drive, you will need your permit. Teachers will be coming in. But again, some of the staggering in the morning uh, will help and, and hopefully create more of a flow uh, so that uh, it's just a little bit easier both at arrival and dismissal. And then our schedule change, our times are just a little bit later this year. Remember, we will be starting uh, classes at 735. So if you are someone who drops kids off, you want to make sure that they're here well before that. 715, our doors will be open. We'll be getting kids in where they have the opportunity to grab their uh, breakfast. And we will have two breakfast sites, one down in the field house and one down near the cafeterias uh, so that we can hopefully break up uh, you know, the kids and make sure that all kids have the ability to get through and grab a good breakfast to start their day. So those are some of the things from the high school. Now here's Dr. Buckshaw with some things from the middle school. Quite a lot, Mr. Hamill. Now I'd like to highlight some of the building specific items for the middle school. We're almost finished with the construction work that was part of our voter approved capital project and the building looks fantastic. We've upgraded our family and consumer science classrooms, our counseling suite, an art room, special education rooms, academic intervention classrooms, security, the nurse's office, bathrooms, the gymnasium, locker rooms, fitness room, and we've even added a life skills suite. The improvements are remarkable. There's a video tour posted on the district homepage, so please take a look. With the capital project, we took the opportunity to renumber our classrooms to create a logical sequence. Therefore, all of our students and staff will need to use the new map that will be provided to locate their classrooms. We've also adjusted the start and end of the day. First period starts at 8 a.m. and the school day ends at 2.50. There will be a virtual activity period from 2.55 to 3.20.
and students can use this time to receive support from their teachers or make up work. Arrival and dismissal procedures have changed to accommodate the increased number of car riders this year. Car riders will need to enter the south parking lot, and that's the parking lot closest to Buffalo Road where Wendy's is. Car riders will enter and exit through door number 19, right there in the south parking lot towards the back of the building. Students will be permitted to enter at 740, and they will be dismissed through the same door at 250. It is very important that you're prompt in the pickup of your child at the end of the day due to supervision. Parents visiting our school to pick up their child for an appointment or an emergency will still come to our school's main entrance. Our entrances are marked by numbers, so it's door number one. Remember to bring your photo IDs with you so that the office staff may verify your identity. Face masks need to be worn at all times. Like the other schools, breakfast will be available. We'll have two portable kiosks to, uh, for those students who participate in the breakfast program. Staff will direct students to those locations when the school year starts. I know we've thrown a lot at you and we've been kind of, uh, you know, delivering a lot of information. At this time, we will have some of our uh, special guests chime in or, oh, I'm sorry, or you can uh, start asking questions, correct? I think the first, first one's for you, Mr. Hamill. Aha! Uh -huh. <laughs> My son's high school schedule shows study halls but no lunch. Does this mean he's eating lunch in study hall? No. Uh, there are still being changes made to the senior high schedule, but your child will have either an early or a late lunch in their fifth period. So uh, that will be clarified and they will be assigned an area where they will be heading for their lunch. When will remote students know what their class schedule will be? Their class, uh, class schedules are public right now. Uh, you can go to uh, school tool to check those. They were actually made public last week. Uh, and all of your information should be on there. And again, there is some, maybe some slight changes that are taking place. Uh, but again, we are getting to the point where things are becoming more and more concrete. But yes, they are on there. Uh, and they will be, you will be able to access them online. The next question asks, will walker passes be allowed at the middle school? Yes, of course they will. So because we don't have sidewalks readily available in the town of Gates and Chilai, we do um, not necessarily, all of our students are provided with a bus. If you would like your child to be able to walk, there is a walker, pa walker pass that's available and your student, your child can get it from the community offices. So it looks like the next question is for me. So if the student starts in school on Tuesday, will there be instruction for students to log on on Monday the 14th? Or do they wait until Tuesday as a first day? We're asking all of our teachers to send out information to their students and to have information posted on Schoology so all students can begin school on Monday whether they are in the building or remote. Our office hours for students only. Will parents be able to contact teachers or do we need to stay with traditional email correspondence? We encourage you to use email correspondence. Teachers are, will be using their office hours to answer specific questions from kids, to review content material. They're not going to be using that time to speak specifically about individual students' needs. So we are encouraging you to please email or call um, your cl the classroom teachers that you'd like to contact. And those um, conferences will be virtual. We will not be having parent conferences um, physically occurring in the building, but we can always create a Teams virtual meeting for you. Can you explain the Wednesday format? You mentioned it's part of the AB rotation, 
but at high school orientation, they said it doesn't follow the same format. You can help with that. I would love to have you help with that. So, Thank you. So the document that will be coming out will outline Wednesday, uh, and it will have all of the specific uh, times on there for our different contents and their office hours. We had to assign specific times to the contents so that kids weren't choosing, you know, should I contact my science teacher or math teacher? So we had them spread out uh, strategically across the way through the time period. There is a little bit of overlap throughout the schedule, but for the most part, uh, the kids will be able to access almost any one of their teachers throughout that, you know, couple hours, uh, and it will not infringe or encroach on the other times with the different contents. So that information will be posted online and be sent to you. I have a few questions. It says, where is the drop-off pickup area at the middle school? We mentioned it a bit earlier, but it is on the south side of the middle school, which is the closest side towards uh, Wendy's and Buffalo Road. When you enter through that road, you will your first entrance right there is door number 19, and our students will be entering there. There will be security there uh, to help our parents get and navigate to the correct place. There's another question that says, who can I contact about issues about being able to log on to Schoology? There are issues relative to Schoology. A student can always complete an IT request and that IT request is available by the student going into class link and filling it out. If we have a parent who's struggling with how to log into Schoology, we also, you can certainly contact the child's assistant principal for guidance relative to that. And there are directions relative to logging into Schoology for parents on the district website. Another question about book bags. It says, do book bags have to be see-through clear bags? They do not. And that applies to both the middle school and the high school. They do not have to be see-through bags. Okay, so it says, for the hybrid student, can you describe what the format is for the three days they are not physically at school? So obviously when they're at school, they're here, they're following their schedule, they're going through their, their daily routine in the building. At home, we, we would expect that they would, if they can, they would jump on and follow along with their schedule during the day. Uh, there will be both synchronous and asynchronous opportunities for kids to learn, and uh, it will definitely benefit the student to be uh, involved and engaged during that time. It'll also promote better sleep patterns and get them ready for the days that they are physically here at school. On the Wednesdays, as I just stated, you'll be receiving the schedule that will indicate when, con when the different contents of teachers are available so that uh, you can either chime into a, or a, go into a synchronous or, or a different type of meeting with your teacher to get answers, or uh, there will be some projects that could be on there to either pre-teach and get you ready for some upcoming lessons or reteach and just solidify the learning that took place in the other days that you were here. So the next question is, what will remote learning look like this year? So at the secondary level, our classes are a mix of hybrid and remote learners together in one class. And given the secondary schedule, when you have 12 to 14 different departments in every department can have six to 10 different courses and electives, there was no way for us to separate our, elect, our hybrid kids from our remote kids the way that we are doing at the elementary. At elementary, we have been able to separate that, but at the secondary level, we haven't. So as Mr. Hamill said, that remote learning will include synchronous and asynchronous opportunities. It is going to depend on the specific course that your child is taking because um, each teacher and the content that they teach is different. Some of it is appropriate for synchronous learning. Some of it may not be. Some of it may be more group projects that are happening in the classroom. Um, and they may be things that are not 
would not be um, accessible for students to be doing in a synchronous way other than just watching a classroom and what's happening in there. So we're trying to provide some flexibility for our teachers around that. We do want to grow into and hope to have more synchronous opportunities than asynchronous. But right now, we're reinventing education. And we're really doing as much as we can to learn and grow as we move forward. And we're hoping that every week we're going to get better at what we're doing. We're going to be able to share more experiences with each other and collaborate and, and get better at how we're teaching um, and how we're educating our students. So we do please ask you to bear with us um, as we take on this year in a way that we've never, education has not done been done before. So we will work with you and I encourage you to uh, make sure that your child is signing on to Schoology, as Mr. Handel said, as Ms. Buckshaw, Dr. Buckshaw is, is encouraging, kids need to be on Schoology. There will be um, lessons, materials, access to things every single day. And so please encourage them to participate on a daily basis. So I'm gonna jump down because this kind of ties right in with what Mrs. Stem just uh, mentioned, but it says on remote days, are they learning live or is it recorded? It's, it's both, it's a combination. You could have, uh, you know, you could have a, a concept being covered synchronously at the beginning of class and then there could be uh, other videos related to the content, again, as part of that same lesson. So it, it, it's gonna depend, uh, but yes, it could be a little of both. Uh, but it, it could also be synchronous or asynchronous on a given day. Next question, will students be allowed to sit with their friends during lunches? Uh, yes, to a certain extent, but lunches will look very different. There are seats marked in the cafeteria, both in the large and small. We have also replaced some tables with desks to maximize the room and make sure that we can uh, accommodate the students that we have in the buildings. We also have different sites. So uh, the upperclassmen were looking to be down near the existing cafeterias, both the large and small cafeteria, with the possibility of using the auditorium as well. Uh, the younger kids, the sophomore and freshman students will be down near the field house area right now. Uh, and we've got the small gym and our lobby of the field house uh, that is outfitted with desks, properly spaced, so yes, you will be able to sit close to your friends, but you will be in, uh, you know, we will be fulfilling uh, the restrict or the uh, guidelines uh, that we have with the restrictions related to COVID. So um, the second part of the question is, will lockers be available late in the year? Yes, we want to get the year going uh, and make sure that we can get people to where they need to be, uh, avoid having groupings in the hallways, meeting and chatting and hanging out. We need to keep kids moving, get them where they need to be, be uh, get them ready for learning. But obviously when the weather changes, we may need to look at this uh, and then we'll see uh, you know, what things look like uh, with the flow of traffic and everything else as the year goes by. What door is pick up and drop off for high schoolers? Uh, we will be down right near the field house door. Really it's door eight, but seven and eight are right next to each other. Uh, it would be like where you come in for uh, a basketball game. Uh, the big thing is when you drop your student off, you need to leave the parking lot. When the door is open, it's 7.15, you drop them off, you leave the parking lot. By waiting, you're creating traffic jams, and it's it just, that's the flow that we're, or that's the problem we're trying to avoid and create that good flow to make sure that buses, as they stagger, will be able to leave, get cleaned up, and get to the middle school run and that our people can leave the parking lots as well as enter. I have uh, the next two questions. It says, will there be a forum by the middle school for remote learning students? Clearly, we can tell there are a lot of questions for our families who will have their children or their child learning remotely this year. This is one forum right now to ask questions. And as the year gets underway, we will consider whether we will need another forum 
to help and assist our parents and our students through this process. The, the, uh, the next question is on remote learning days, are they learning live or is it recorded? And we did touch on that a little bit already. Um, it's a combination of both of those components that we'll, we'll have in the school day. The key thing about remote learning is we want the children to do the best that they can at following their schedule throughout the school day. Get up in the morning, follow a routine, log into the classes that they would have on that day, whether it's an A day or a B day, and complete tasks. With that said, we also understand that that's not possible for all of our students. And because of that, there will be some videos that our family, that our students would be able to tap into through Schoology as well as tasks that they would be completing. The next question says, my son is enrolled in the hybrid model and has science lab on A day and phys ed on a B day. How does he do these classes on days from home? Well, that's a great question. That is one of the things that our teachers have been working very hard on this week. These four days have been invaluable for our staff to get a, a handle on how we will be teaching our students both in person as well as at home. And so they have de designed the format, they've come up with lessons, and they will post those in Schoology. So I, I want to emphasize again how powerful Schoology is. Every parent will have access to Schoology and will be able to, their own access, and go in and see their child's courses. Students will also have access. On the first day of school, our system populates Schoology so that all of the courses that a child is enrolled in will already exist. And our staff, whether the students are remote or they're at home that day, or they are in person, will have access to a course syllabus from each teacher in each class that highlights all the key information for that class. And I think that we're gonna find that that information is going to be very helpful and may assist you in answering many of the questions that you know we're, quite frankly, you're uneasy about right now and, and we get it, we wanna be able to support you. So be on the lookout for the Schoology sites and the classes and looking at that course syllabus. Next question is for me. Uh, are, is health screening required for remote learners? Yes, uh, it is same with our remote staff as well. To help monitor our staff and students, we are asking that um, uh, families of our learners uh, and our staff uh, fill out the health screening daily. Um, even if they are remote. All right, the question that they will be asked as a remote uh, learner will be, um, are they eligible to come to campus? All right, if they're coming to campus that day, that's what we wanna know. That will then prompt additional questions that they would have to fill out of, around, um, if they've been around anyone who has been infected or if they've been around anyone who has been quarantined. So yes, to answer your question, uh, if you are a remote learner, uh, please fill out that health health screening for your child. Max. Me? Yep, there's a question that says, will Max be available for the high school and the middle school? And they will be. At the middle school, the maps are printed on the back of the student agendas that will be passed out on the first day. And I'm gonna let Mr. Hamill answer for the high school. Yeah, uh, our, our maps will be uh, available for kids and we will have uh, peer leaders helping students just find the different uh, hallways and classrooms uh, for the first day. Uh, we do not necessarily hand out student planners to everyone. We are encouraging them to use, to, to use their Schoology and their digital uh, resources. But again, the maps will be available for kids and they will be, uh, and there will be student assistance also uh, there to help. Ms. Petrosino, could you scroll back one? I, I think I, yeah, there was a question about if we handed in a laptop at the end of last year because it was damaged, uh, when will the person be getting the laptop back? Uh, 
our lab or our uh, computer technician uh, was making calls today uh, to kids that were in that situation. Some kids turned them in uh, just for safekeeping. Other kids turned them in uh, because they did have a problem. So uh, if you uh, contact us, we will get you uh, to Mrs. Freer, and then we'll uh, we'll have that answer for you. Uh, and again, we did hand some of those out on our deployment nights last week, and then we will be having some opportunities coming up next week, which will be posted. The next question asks if the A and B schedule for middle school is an every other day switch. The high school and the middle school will both follow the same schedule. It's an A and a B day. And it is an every other day switch. Wednesdays are included in that count. So for example, next week we start school on Monday. Monday is an A day. Students will follow their A day schedule, whether they're in person or at home or remote learners. Tuesday would be a B day, same thing, follow the schedule. And then Wednesday goes to an A day. So there was another question that asks, do students follow their schedule on Wednesdays? They do. So students will continue to follow their schedule. So in the case of next week, next Wednesday will be an A day. Students need to follow their schedule in Schoology for that while working at home. And they also need to be in tune with the office hours that teachers will have available throughout that day so they can access them if they need them or desire them. So the next question, I think we've addressed a little bit, but I'm gonna come back to it. Will remote learners get real-time teacher instructions and demonstrations? As we shared with you, depending on the course and the class and what's happening in a given lesson, there's going to be synchronous and asynchronous instruction that's occurring. In regards to real time, if your student is following their schedule, which they can, a remote uh, learner can find right in school tool, that following their schedule, when they sign on that day at the beginning of that class, there will be information in Schoology for them for that given day, that given class period. So if a high school student misses a class for whatever reason on a remote day, is there a way to make it up or is it marked as an absence? So uh, on the remote days, um, we are encouraging all students, obviously, to follow their schedule, to be a part of that class. But that teacher will have that lesson online on Schoology so that if there is something uh, important where you cannot you know, participate during that time or... Uh, you know, you may have a, an appointment or something, you can go on at a later time that day to finish and complete that work. But again, I would encourage you as much as you can to stay on the schedule uh, and take advantage of any synchronous uh, learning situations that are there because that will be the, the strongest way uh, and, and in my eyes, the best way to, to make sure that we get the learning done. How will fire drills work at the high school if we have them? We will have them. We are required by law to have them. Uh, the amount that we normally have is actually doubled because we will have to have them not only for the kids that uh, are here and starting at school learning on Monday, but then those kids who are home and now here on Tuesday also need to experience the same number of drills. So we have them uh, scheduled out uh, within the first three and four weeks of school so that we don't overlap with, with too many classes or you know go through the same class, but we will be having fire drills at the beginning of the year, very similar to what we've done in the past. Okay, the next question is, how do we gain access to the health application? So one of the great things about our health assessment is gonna be emailed uh, to all of our families uh, for elementary, middle, and high school. And then it is also going to be emailed to our high school students. Our high school students can fill out this health assessment as well. Um, the first day that you receive it, you can also opt to receive it as a text message as well, too, if you prefer. So you receive it both as an email and a text message if you prefer. And we're asking that people do it daily. Um, we are hoping by the end of this week to do a test run 
that will go out to all families and again also to our high school students so they become familiar with it. Uh, but I want to be clear, there's no app to download. It'll go right to your inbox. So please make sure that you're checking your emails and we will communicate um, through email, but also through a robocall to all families, letting them know that, be, that this is going to take place prior to. Um, question about how will PE be taught for remote learners? It's going to be similar to our other uh, classes for remote learners. It will be through Schoology um, for our students. It'll, it'll be similar in many ways to what they experienced in the spring. They will have activities, they will have content that they have to absorb and they have to go through and report back to their teachers. We are highly recommending in all classes with physical education that uh, our students take advantage of Wednesday's check-in uh, with their teachers to make sure that they are processing their work and that they're submitting it uh, and having that dialogue with their phys ed teacher. The next question says, do students in middle school still have classes on Wednesdays? We were told that it is a cleaning day for teachers. Throughout the district, our students still have learning occurring on Wednesdays. It's at home. So at the secondary level, if it's an A day or a B day, they will follow their A day or their B day schedule and go through that. Every single day, is a deep cleaning and a disinfectant day. We are doing that every day of the week. Originally, that was something different, but we know how important it is that that be done every day. So that's how it'll be done. <laughs> <laughs> so will the students have structured learning and Zoom instruction on the remote days as they will have in person? If not, how will the kids learn all of the content needed for the whole year? So first, let me share with you a little bit about Zoom. This year, we are using what is called Teams. And Teams is very similar to what Zoom was last year. But Teams um, is part of our Microsoft Office suite, where our kids are used to um, accessing um, their documents and saving documents and students will be able to attend synchronously through Teams with an access code just like they did with Zoom. So you're going to start hearing the word Teams instead of Zoom this year. In regards to the remote learning, we are again, this is new for us and we are um, all kids will have synchronous and asynchronous um, learning opportunities to the extent at which hybrid have synchronous live part of their day is in person. So obviously they will have more synchronous time than a remote learner who is at home. But we are encouraging all of our staff to videotape um, lessons, to pre-record lessons, to have videos, to have materials all on Schoology for them. As I said, we're new at this and we know it's going to be difficult as we begin the year, but please bear with us. We are trying, we are providing professional development um, for our teachers. We are um, have coaches that are out and about and going to be helping our teachers and we will get better at it as we move forward. There's a question that says, how will remote study halls work at the middle school? Well, if you are remote, uh, study halls are not classes that are graded. So it's an opportunity for students to work on their assignments. So if a student has that in their schedule, then the student will have the time in their day to work on their assignments. So it says, is attendance being taken each day? Oh, scroll back down, this, sorry. Uh, just some confusion about the at-home days. Is attendance being taken each period? Do they need to log on in or log in and then the teacher will let them uh, either stay or give them the instruction to log off uh, for independent work? It will depend on the teacher, it will depend on the course. But again, I, I would encourage all students to log into your classes uh, at, when you are at home. Uh, there will be information on there. Uh, teachers will know who is there and who's not. And students will have the, uh, the ability to uh, complete tasks, look at materials, go through resources, 
and again, take advantage of whatever learning opportunities we have in there. So if you're asking me, the answer is yes, they should check in and then wait for direction from the teacher. Okay, next one is for me. Uh, and just to report, we have 10 minutes left on this forum. Um, so the question is, will my daughter be receiving a health form herself or will I get it in my email once the health screen is completed? Do the kids have to show proof uh, when they walk in daily? So you will receive it uh, via email. Again, we're gonna try to do a test run later this week so everyone becomes a little more comfortable. Uh, you can opt to make it uh, a text message as well. Um, but students will not have to show proof. Uh, the great thing about the system, and we're fine tuning it now, is at the building level, our administrators will not only be able to see our staff, but also our students, and our school nurses will be able to see our students too. So if someone has not completed it, we will be able to find that student and test them immediately and call home uh, to have that health assessment completed. So they do not have to walk in. But at the end of the assessment, you will get either an approved or denied page, which will be emailed back to you to confirm and, and that, that can be saved on your phone, but you do not have to uh, show proof upon entrance. So will students attending classes in person on hybrid days need to wear their masks the entire time while in the classroom and the entire day? Well, students will be required to wear them in the hallways and during class. Uh, mask breaks will be afforded to kids throughout the day. Uh, and as students are seated, when they are seated for lunch, they will be able to take their mask off during that time. Uh, again, when it's time to leave their desk uh, in, the, in the cafeteria or designated eating area, they will have to put their mask back on. And yes, we will be getting used to wearing masks most of the day, uh, again, except for those mask breaks. Or we are encouraging uh, teachers to uh, you know, utilize outside learning space as well that may also provide some time and space for uh, kids uh, to be able to take their masks off in a safely distanced environment. The next question is in regards to the sixth graders. It says, will staff be helping kids get to the correct classes throughout the day as they've never been in the school before? Absolutely. Our staff will be out in the hallway for all passing times, plus we have staff in the hall during class to assist students in getting to where they need to. It's also important to note that because we renumbered our classrooms this year, it'll also be new for seventh and eighth grade students who will find that rooms have new room numbers. We will help everyone get to where they need to be. The next question says, will Schoology assignments be real time? Will I be able to see if an assignment is missed or noted as complete in a timely fashion versus at the end of the semester? Schoology will communicate with school tool and our teachers will also be putting uh, grades into school tool. I know that last year in the springtime how grading occurred, it was very different from what we are doing this fall. We are going back to more of the traditional way that we kept grades at the high school and the middle school and parents will be able to see in school tool the assignments, they will they'll be updated pretty frequently so that our students and parents can see what's missed and what's been completed. And if it's been completed, what the score on that might be. Schoology itself is not real time in that um, like there's a camera or anything like that. But you will be able to have discussion posts that are in there and you will be able to see as a parent if your child submitted an assignment. So the question reads, what days are A days and what are B days? Are A days on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and B days on Tuesday, Thursday? We're not sure how to follow them. So I think the easiest way to kind of get a handle on this is to think about a two-week block. So you've got Monday through Friday one week and Monday through Friday the next week. So we're going to go A, B, A, B, A, and because Wednesdays do count, the next week would go B, A, B, A, B. And what that does is it accommodates for uh, classes that are offered, you know, in a, in a different cycle, such as an AIS, such as labs, uh, in science, and such as phys ed. So that, that ensures that, that, that kids will not be always remote on a lab day 
or, or you know, it covers us and make sure that the schedule does flow and does, uh, does take care of those classes. The next question says, my daughter has not received her schedule yet for middle school. When will they send those out? This year's schedules were not mailed out. Instead, they became live on the parent portal last Wednesday. If you're having difficulty accessing that, please contact the middle school and we'll be able to help you through that. The next question says, if the schedule has band on it, should they be bringing their instrument as normal? It's a great question because we know that band and chorus will not be as whatever normal is, but we know that they will be um, working on music. Let's follow the, the instructions of our band teachers on this and they will be communicating with our students regarding what is needed regarding their instruments. I would not worry about it on the first in-person day that they have band. So what will the classrooms at the high school look like? Are there separate desks or will there be tables with dividers uh, like elementary? Can you post a picture online? Uh, I can certainly post a picture online. I can also tell you that depending on the classroom, uh, you know, we, we uh, it, it varies. Um, some classrooms are all tables. Uh, sometimes that's related to science. Sometimes there's a combination. But over the last couple of years, we have gone to uh, a lot of tables in our rooms. So again, that depends on the teacher too. Um, but yeah, I can, I can tweet out a couple pictures. Um, and then in some uh, classrooms, you'll see there may be 28 desks with X's on certain desks that those are the ones you will use or not use on a given day or a given period. Others, uh, we have taken several of the desks out of rooms to, to ensure that we have enough seating capacity in the uh, new cafeteria uh, areas. So not only in the small cafeteria to utilize more space due to construction, but also in the uh, field house area and the small gym so that, uh, again, we can just use every safe square inch we can uh, to give the kids a, a safe and a, and a good place to, uh, to eat their lunches. Uh, the question about all uh, lunches going to free or reduced lunch or free lunches, that is something that the district is preparing, uh, you know, information to put out. So uh, just be in tune for those details, that I, and they're coming very soon. So at this time, uh, we want to thank everyone who tuned in to this live uh, afternoon and everyone who submitted questions. We will continue to communicate with families in the coming days, uh, and right up through the first day of school, which is Monday, September 14th. And just a reminder that our BOCES students, our Wamoko kids, are starting uh, tomorrow. Uh, and they have received information on both transportation and what that will look like on their given days. Please continue to check your email regularly for important updates from the district and each of our buildings. We thank you for your continued support through this and your patience. Have a great evening. Thank you.